Our catechism recitation for this evening continues our review of the Ten Commandments and their meanings on this night, the Fifth Commandment. What is the Fifth Commandment? Thou, Thou shalt not kill. kill. What does this mean? We, we should fear and love God, that we may not hurt nor harm our neighbor in his body, but help and befriend him in every bodily need. In our opening hymn, Come Thou Fount of Every Blessing.
God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto thee all my sins and iniquities, with which I have ever offended thee, and justly deserve thy temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them, and sincerely repent of them, and I pray thee of thy boundless mercy, and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. Upon this your confession, I by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost.
Make us to have a perpetual fear and love of thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. From the book of the prophet Jeremiah, the 17th chapter. Thus the Lord said to me, Go and stand in the gate of the children of the people, by which the kings of Judah come in, and by which they go out, and in all the gates of Jerusalem, and say to them, Hear the word of the Lord, you kings of Judah, and all Judah, in all the inhabitants of Jerusalem who enter by these gates. Thus says the Lord, Take heed to yourselves, and bear no burden on the Sabbath day, nor bring it by the gates of Jerusalem, nor carry a burden out of your houses on the Sabbath day, nor do any work, but hallow the Sabbath day, as I commanded your fathers. But they did not obey, nor incline their ear, but made their neck stiff, that they might not hear nor receive instruction. And it shall be, if you heed me carefully, says the Lord, to bring no burden through the gates of this city on the Sabbath day, but have of the Sabbath day to do no work in it. Then shall enter the gates of this city kings and princes sitting on the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, they and their princes, accompanied by the men of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And this city shall remain forever. They shall come from the cities of Judah and from the places around Jerusalem, from the land of Benjamin and from the lowland, from the mountains and from the south, bringing burnt offerings and sacrifices, grain offerings and incense, bringing sacrifices of praise to the house of the Lord. But if you will not heed me to hallow the Sabbath day, such as not carrying a burden when entering the gates of Jerusalem on the Sabbath day, then I will kindle a fire in its gates, and it shall devour the palaces of Jerusalem, and it shall not be quenched. Here ends the lesson. The epistle for the third Sunday after Holy Trinity is from the first epistle of St. Peter, the fifth chapter. Pray. Therefore humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time, casting all your care upon him, for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him, steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. But may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, Perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. To him be the glory and the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Here ends the epistle. Praise is the Lord and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Walk about Zion, tell the towers their all, mark well her bulwarks, consider her palaces, that ye may tell it to the generation following. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our God even unto death. Hallelujah. Instead of respond with the triple hallelujah verse. Hallelujah.
amazing grace to you and amazing peace from God your Father and the Lord Jesus Christ his Son your Good Shepherd and the Holy Spirit who calls us through the gospel of Christ so that we are no longer lost but found by him forever. Amen. Or what woman having ten silver coins, if she loses one coin, does not light a lamp, sweep the house, and search carefully until she finds it? Because this one lost coin is a treasure to this woman. It's a full 10% of that which she owns. Now to be sure, that lost sheep, that one in a hundred, is likewise a treasure to the shepherd who owns that precious sheep. And in the third of the three parables that Jesus teaches, particularly to the Pharisees and the scribes, so that they would get the point that Jesus is not just merely talking about sheep and coins, but his beloved one. He then goes on to teach the parable of the prodigal or lost son. Because whether you're talking about a sheep or a coin or a human being, this is a treasure to God. An absolute treasure. And this is why the Evangelical Lutheran Church, that is to say, those Lutheran congregations who continue to cling to the Scriptures as the pure fountain of God's Word flowing down into this earth, and the Book of Concord, headed particularly by the unaltered Augsburg Confession, presented before the Emperor Charles V, Emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, on this very day, the 25th of June, in the year of our Lord, 1530, 493 years ago and this continues to stand as our treasure found for us by God himself it's hard to imagine that the treasure that is the gospel that is the pure gospel of Jesus Christ could become lost particularly in his church. But we see it already as he confronts the Pharisees and the scribes and has to teach them those three parables about how to treasure the people of God by treasuring the word of God that relieves men and women and children of the burden of sin. The Pharisees and the scribes, as well as all of those clerics in the medieval era of the Christian church leading into the Lutheran Reformation in the 16th century 
AD, these are the ones who read and studied and interpreted the scriptures every single day. It was their business, quite actually, to study the scriptures, to know them, and then to convey this precious treasure to the people of God. But reading the scriptures and studying them and meditating upon them as the scribes, as the Pharisees, as all of those clerics of the Christian church throughout the mid Middle Ages, none of that is a guarantee because you also have to use the lens of the pure confession of the truth that that word produces. For the Pharisees and scribes that Jesus is confronting here, they've lost sight of the gospel. We can tell that by their grumbling against Jesus, of all people. First of all, they ought to know who he is. They ought to have led the people in the confession that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father and to follow him as the Messiah, the long-promised one of God, now come into the world to save them, to save all who believe. But their complaint this man receives sinners? They have lost sight of who God is and what he is all about. God treasures sinners. Not so that we would remain in our sin, but so that we can place our burdens on him. This is what the Lord God is speaking through the prophet Jeremiah in our lesson for this night. On the one hand, he's talking about physical burdens, about the labors of the body, carrying around sacks of grain, carrying around other heavy objects, in their work on a day in which they are to rest from those burdens. But even more, the Sabbath day was not merely about resting the body, but by unladening yourself of the burden of sin. It's why God both commands and invites his people to come to his house on the Sabbath so that he might proclaim the gospel. The gospel that declares that his own Messiah shoulders the burden of sin, takes upon himself death, and instead gives us the peace and joy of sin unburdened and the assurance of life eternal with God. To lighten our hearts, to remove the guilt and the worry and the anxiety and instead fill it with thoughts of joy and peace and love. The love of the God who himself comes to take those burdens away. That's what those three parables that Jesus teaches. It's about God coming to us, his precious lambs, those whom he treasures, 
his own children wandering in the wilderness of sin and death, that he might rescue us, place us on his shoulders, which is no burden to him at all, and carry us to his house and even to our heavenly home. This is why you've come. And this is why the gospel continues to be treasured among us. We rejoice that God has, himself has restored it through the blessed reformers of the church, Martin Luther, Philip Melanchthon, and also those men who put their reputations and their lives on the line in subscribing first this most blessed confession of the truth. That we might have it yet in our day. And know how to read the scriptures. To read them through the lens of that confession that is true and pure. Because we continue to re-examine it in the light of the Holy Scriptures. And see that it is indeed a faithful exhibition of the teaching of God's own doctrine. Particularly the gospel that removes our burden. The gospel of holy baptism that washes away the heaviness of sins and leaves us gleaming, lighter than air, ready to rise even into heavenly heights, allowing us to walk on a higher plane in this world. We hear that word of absolution at the beginning of our divine service, also part of the Lutheran genius and the confession of our church. The confession of sin le leading to the confession of the truth that your sins are forgiven by God's grace and you are his forever. We come this night to the holy table of the Lord's grace to partake not of mere bread and wine, but of what Jesus says that it is, his body and his blood. Our Finnish brethren use as their communion distribution words, the words that we find in St. Matthew's Gospel, recording these words of Jesus, Come unto me, O ye who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. As he takes off of our shoulders the guilt, the shame, and instead places upon us his righteousness anew and his role, declaring us to be worthy of such a gift of grace as his gospel. And then not only that, he continues to go out with us. What he has found, he continues to treasure and cherish. He and his holy angels rejoice over each and every one of you for the rest of your lives. You rightly join in that rejoicing, declaring that though we were once lost, we are now found and are with him, our Savior forever. Amen. Peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We join in the offertory. Create
You have come to seek and to save that which was lost because you treasure each and every one of us. You have established with each and every one of us through your holy gospel an everlasting relationship. By your grace you have declared us to be children of your heavenly Father. Your disciples in this day who continue to read and study your work in the light of the confession of your holy Christian church on earth so that we have a faithful witness to the truth. And by the work of your Holy Spirit, you keep us in that truth so that we might be truly free. Free from the burden of our sin. Free from the shackles of everlasting death. Free to live this life of love towards you and neighbor and properly to ourselves. We pray that you would continue to bless your holy Christian church that we might make the good confession both before God and men so that many more hearing this proclamation might be found through your word and by your spirit and join with us in the eternal rejoicing over all who have been found by you. We pray that you would continue to send laborers into your harvest, and we pray your blessing upon Benjamin and Jacob as they prayerfully consider the divine call that have been extended to them so that they might announce before all the world their understanding of your will for each of them and go joyfully to this task of serving you like serving your holy people. We pray that you would continue to bless the family as an institution in our own individual families. Continue to provide for them all the daily bread that you provide to the world and that you would likewise use your giving of your gracious gifts to open the eyes of all of our family members to the grace that you would provide that they would be members of your holy family forever. We pray that you would continue to be the king of all nations under heaven and that you would reign through faithful and pious rulers in all nations under heaven to the maintenance of righteousness and the hindrance and punishment of wickedness and put an end to warfare, especially in the Ukraine, and violence in all places so that we might, through the conversion of human hearts, be communities of love We pray that you would bring your consolation and comfort abundantly into the lives of those who grieve and mourn in these days. We pray that you would be the great physician and bring healing and strengthening to all who are afflicted in this time. To us all who battle our chronic conditions of health. For Jim and Darlene and Ted and Brenda, and for Carol and Karen, and also for Kyle that you would speedily remove the inflammation of the cellulitis that has come to his way again. Continue your tender mercies towards Nancy and help her to keep her blood sugar in control as well as all other systems within her body. We ask that you would continue likewise your grace towards Jim and Paul and bring them an abundance of all of their blessings, not only to their bodies, but also to their souls. Grant safe travel to us all in this coming week, even as you have safely returned our dear brother Ted to us from Canada. So we pray safe travel for Jim and Darlene, for Jordan and Susan and Sinjin, indeed for all of you and family that travels in this coming week. And 
for these and all things whatsoever thou wouldst have us ask of thee. God save unto us, O God, for the sake of the bitter sufferings and death of Jesus Christ, thine only Son, our Lord and Savior, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Stop 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as often as ye drink it in remembrance of me. A peace of the Lord be with you always. This is the true blood of your Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Shed for the remission of all of your sins. His body and blood. Strengthen and keep your own flesh and blood in the one true faith giving the one true confession of the truth to the one God, with whom you will dwell forevermore, for he has sought you. Depart in peace. Amen.
that thou hast refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we beseech thee that of thy mercy thou would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward thee, and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Oh. 